This is Calafia, Book One, the fifth and final section. Gun smoke and screams advance from fallen walls. Invaders pulse through streets like blood through veins. And Calafia led them eastward, past wide Hagia Sophia, where they heard the liturgy intoned against the foes who broke her holy doors and slashed her narthex icons blank. Some say the bishop took the holy wine and slipped within the altar. Others saw the emperor ride forth and fall among the faceless dead, whose names are known by dust alone, until God comes again and judges men. Or, if the sage is right, the old ones rise from under sea and raise the faithless earth. But one priest raced beyond the reach of those iconoclasts. He grasped within his hand a bundle wrapped in red, a relic from Christ's time, the sword of Peter, who attacked the thugs that came to take his Lord. And since the Lord rebuked the saint and healed the wound, the weapon could not be uplifted in an unjust fight. The priest fled east. He planned to sink his charge within the Bosphorus before he'd see it in the Sultan's hands or let it crown a Meccan shrine. He was Manelli, archpriest of God's church and brother to the knight who ran beside the fleeing Calafia now. Manelli saw across a square two friends pursued by Mehmet's janissaries who each bore a loaded smoking arquebus. Manelli recognized his kin and cried, Good Talenke, I bring you aid from green Gethsemane. He flung the red-wrapped bundle, which unspooled as if it were a Roman flag, snapped by the wind which blows toward Bethlehem. The sword of black Damascus fell into the grip of Talenke, and Calafia saw her knight leap like a hawk pecked eagle toward his foes and plunge as fast as cannon fire his blade into a janissary's chest. But barrels turned toward Calafia and the queen, the queen cried, sword! Then Talenke, who read her thought before her word, now lobbed the sword into her upraised palm. She whipped the blade down, had six barreled guns before they spouted fire. Instead, they burst, blared, sputtered, torched each gunman black. And trading thus the hallowed sword, the queen and knight rebuffed Mehmet's revenge. But now new threats throbs from the west, a, gra a grabbing mob of pillagers, the wide earth's men, intent for months on plunder, at last let loose on Christendom. Queen Calafia sees it all, sees Istanbul is lost, that every form still left within the aching walls will soon be used and tossed like trash. She tilts her chin until her eyes see only sky and howls a condor cry so loud it shivers all the window panes of rasping beat and bowed Byzantium. The griffins come. They must, their lady calls to them. Their wing beats snuff out flame. They bear the priest, the knight, the moonlight queen above the lute, the laughs, the blood drunk spears, the last death rattle of the cross on smoke swept stone, the hated bodies of Esplandion and his betrothed, both crucified on makeshift staves, the sultan on his groom shine steed, now prancing through the city toward the white imperial palace where he will be crowned at last as Caesar, while our three are carried east like words through air. This has been the fifth and final section of book one of Calafia and Adventure. There are three books in Calafia. Book two is coming soon. If you'd like to follow along, you can find the ebook of Calafia on Amazon. Thanks very much.